pure God power. Get everything you ever wanted and live the life of your dreams. The Master's Course. Copyright 2010 by Richard Lee McKim Jr. All rights reserved. Let the quest for knowing begin. Okay, number three. Question number three. Affirmations are labels that are created how? A. By thoughts. B. By spoken words. C. By actions. Or D. All. Once again, it's D. It's all of them. You can be thinking something. You're creating a label. You can think, oh, this is going to be hard. Guess what? It's going to be hard. Be thinking, this is going to be easy. Hey, it is. Hey, this is going to be great. Hey, it is. This is going to be a wonderful opportunity. Guess what? Now it is. Those are just thoughts. And then, of course, B, by spoken words, well, you know, when you speak it, you just enhance it even more because first... It's a thought. You can't say something that wasn't first a thought. So first it's a thought, but then when you speak it, then you've enhanced it even more. This is going to be a great opportunity. You're thinking that, but then you say it out loud. This is going to be a great opportunity. Wow, you're really making a powerful label. And then by actions, well, man, thought, word, and action, that's, that's the powerful trio. That makes things happen. When you act like things are working out for you, guess what? They are. When you say, hey, I'm going to work, and you get up and go to work, that's action. It's all good. Labels are powerful. You can use them now. You see, by thoughts and spoken words, you know, once again, if you say, I'm happy, things are going good for me, you're going to see it. You're going to elicit it. Somebody's going to call you up and say, hey, come to a party. Do you think people call people that are sad sacks and call them up and say, hey, come to a party? They don't want those people at their party. They don't want to bring everybody down and walking around saying, oh, poor me. Oh, things are so bad. They don't want that. But if you're happy and if you're feeling good about things, guess what? You get invited to parties. Of course. Labels are powerful. But if you say, oh, I'm unhappy, guess what you're going to see? You're going to see unhappy things. Things are going to work out unhappy for you. You're going to notice, oh, I'm out of peanut butter. Or, oh, my car doesn't have enough gas. Or, oh, it's not new. But if you're happy, if you're thinking happy thoughts, you're thinking, hey, my car might not be new, but guess what? I got one. And guess what? It's running great. And it's getting me where I need to go. Fantastic. It's all in how you label it. Okay, question number four. Written labels do what powerfully? A. Confirm meaning. B. Assert meaning. C convey meaning or D all what do you think it's D all they can confirm meaning which means that when you put a label on something when it's confirming meaning basically you're asserting the same meaning that it naturally has because remember everything has a meaning to start with because if it didn't it wouldn't exist so you could put a label on the jar of rice you could say put a label on it that says this is rice which is what people do in the kitchen because they want to know what's in it so that label is confirming the meaning it's confirming the meaning this is rice 
And it can assert meaning. You can say this is good rice. This is bad rice. Or you can say, I hate you or I love you. You're asserting meaning. And conveying meaning, well, that's what, that's what written labels do best. They convey a meaning. You know, you can think a meaning momentarily. And then when you walk off, if you're thinking about something else, that meaning is still lingering. But when it's written, it's lasting. It's more powerfully lasting. It, it's not as uh, susceptible to whims of new meanings being asserted on it. Like, you could be looking at this rice and say, man, this is really terrible rice. This rice is no good. And you walk off. And somebody else comes up to it and says, hey, this is some pretty good rice. It now becomes good rice for them. But if you put a label on it saying, hey, this is bad rice. This rice is no good. Then somebody else comes up to it and looks at it and says, hey, this rice is no good. That's what written labels do. They can confirm a meaning. They can assert a meaning. Or they can convey a meaning. But they do it in a kind of a lasting way. Because it's written. Okay, question number five. Happiness and unhappiness are what? A. States of being. B. Just labels which elicit their kind. C. Easily switched by decision. Or D. All. Once again, it's D. It's all. Happiness and unhappiness are just states of being. That's all. And B, just labels which elicit their kind. They're, th that's all they are. They're just labels. If you say, I'm happy, things are going well for me, then that's all it is, is a label. And guess what? Things start working out for you. Guess what? You start seeing good things. Because they're eliciting their kind. You put a bad label on the rice, it elicits bad results. You put a good label on the rice, elicit good results. You put a bad label on yourself, you're going to elicit bad results. You put a good label on yourself, you're going to elicit good results. It's just that simple. C, easily switch by decision. Man, of course. Happiness and unhappiness, you know, you know how easy that can switch back and forth? You know how easy that is? Somebody's unhappy, you know, and if you can get them into the happy state, then guess what? Everything looks good now. Everything tastes better. People are calling you up. It's just that easy. It's a simple label. You can just say, hey, you know what? I don't care what's going on. I don't care what the circumstance is. Because remember, circumstance means nothing. It is the meaning. That's the only thing that counts. That's the only thing that has power is the meaning. So if you say, no matter what, I'm going to be happy. Doggone it. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. And so you put on a, a comedy. Watch a comedy or listen to some music that you like or call up a friend and decide to be happy. The next thing you know, you're thinking, hey, I think I'll go out tonight. Or, hey, why don't I order some pizza and have some friends over or, or, uh, or something? Because those kinds of ideas, those kinds of thoughts, those kinds of feelings get elicited by the thought that I'm happy. When you think about your past, when you're thinking from the place of I'm happy, you think about some fun times. When you're thinking about your future, you're thinking about fun times to come from the place of happy. That's just how it works. It's just a label. It's a powerful label. Always be happy. And you will always be happy. That was the end of chapter number 6. To continue, go to How to Use Your God Power, chapter number 7, segment number 1. Let your quest for knowing continue.